12 things your partner won't tell you. That's what we call body language. You come to a stage in life, either with your wife or with your husband or somebody you have worked with for a very long time to understand their body language. Signs are very, very powerful. Body languages are very, very powerful. A relationship or a marriage comes to the stage of maturity where people or when spouses begin to understand each other's body language. It is in the place of body language that partners may not want to say some things verbally. Because to them it is expected that this person has worked with me to such a time that the person will understand me when I sneeze, what I mean by sneezing. When I cough, what I mean by coughing. If I put my hands this way, what I mean by crossing my, my hands across my chest. If I put my arm under my cheek, what I mean by placing my hand under my cheek. They are all called body languages. In the security field, in the security world, the CIAs, the FBIs, and those who are into investigation, forensic investigation, or all manner of investigations, one of their secrets are simply called understanding of body languages. So it should be in relationship and in marriage. Somebody will say, no, I don't have the time for body language. There is no way you wouldn't have the time to understand body languages. Until you've come to the point that where you can understand each other's body language without saying anything verbally and yet you are communicating something to your spouse or to your fiance or your fiance. Until you've come to that level, there may be no so much future for that marriage or relationship. Praise the Lord. Because it is said that it's not everything you say verbally in the public. All right, let's look at the first language or the first signs or the first thing your partner will never tell you. Number one, that they are broke and hopeless. Your partner will never tell you that they are broke or hopeless. But from the side of the woman or the side of the man. As long as the man is concerned, not just the man, every man exudes his energy, ego, and confidence from the level of what he or she has in their pocket. The confidence of every man is determined by the money in his pocket. That is why it is said that men work for women. Either for their wives, their mother, their daughter, or a female friend that they have. Men, have averagely, work for women. Whether they agree with that um, notion or not, it is true. Either his wife, his daughter, his mother, or a female friend somewhere, every man is working for a woman. They say, no, they are working to build a house. They build the house for a woman. They say, no, they are buying the car to just flex muscles up. They are buying the car to impress a woman somewhere. So it's like being said that men work their entire life for the sake of women. A man ne never feels fulfilled in his achievement until there is a woman by his side. So the spouse will not say this. Same with the woman. A woman that is a working class woman or a hard working woman who does business and the rest, bringing in money and suddenly there is a seize of financial flow. She's going to keep quiet for a while. As she keeps quiet, she begins to ask the husband, hey, what is our future? What are our plans in this area? What are our plans in that area? You see, there are women who are more, so women who are more visionary than their husbands. Just like what they say, say, better soup, na money the killer. Are you understanding me? They have so much vision, but the reason why they can't express that vision is the lack of funds. So you see them hanging around their husband or their fiance. So what's our future like? Uh, we notice that this is not working. This is, that is not working. That we, you see, um, don't you think that? We, and short, how much do you have in your account? She wouldn't want to tell him that she's broke because the fear is when a man finds out that the wife. Or the fiancé is an absolute liability. There is the tendency of the shift of connection, the shift of loyalty, and the shift of emotions. The second thing your spouse, your partner, or your fiancé fiance will not tell you is that they are tired of the interference of your mom. In, their relation, in the relationship or in the marriage. They won't tell you that. They will never tell you that they are tired of your mom. 
It's, both, it's from both sides. Your husband will not tell you that he's fed up of your mom. No, he wouldn't want to hurt you. But you could notice some body languages that those days before your mom came to visit, your husband comes home very early. And the first one week your mom came to visit, he's still coming home hell early. Second week, he's coming home early. Third week, is beginning to say this mother-in-law, I love and respect her, but it's like she's beginning to overstay her welcome. Fourth week, fifth week, he begins to come back home late. And the wife will begin to wonder, why isn't this man coming home early as he used to? He won't tell you that your mother is occupying the, 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 the marriage space. He won't say it. So the only way he just want to keep to himself is to begin to come back late. Praise the Lord. So men express that frustration of the parents, I mean of the presence of parent-in-laws with them by withdrawal. So when your spouse begins to withdraw, particularly the man, the husband, begins to withdraw, coming back late, it is not work. He's just trying to maintain his own space. How do women or ladies express their tiredness over the frustration of parent-in-laws, particularly mother-in-laws? They begin to withdraw so. But in their withdrawal, they withdraw with anger and bitterness. They begin to frown their face. The woman no longer smiles. Even if she smiles in the presence of her mother-in-law, as soon as she turns her back, you, you could see that frowning face immediately. Anything the man does gets her irritated. Please don't touch me. Please don't talk to me. She begins to snap at the man, begins to get irritated at the man, all she's trying to do is to pass a message across to the man that bros, mama don't stay too long. May she go back now. But none of them want to express it verbally so that it doesn't look as if they're being disrespectful or they're expressing hatred. So what they do is to express it through their body language. They taught thing, your spouse, your fiance, will not tell you is that they wish you were their ex. They will never say it. Why the lady sits there looking at how foolish the man is? She will just be shaking her head. Kai, I wish I married that guy. If not this person right now, if he would have done this. If not this person right now, he would have done that. Is, is somebody got to me? Hello? <laughs> Let me say this to shock you. I tried settling that marriage. It didn't work. I tried everything I could. The man said, never again. The marriage is gone. What was the problem? At the cost of operation, are you understanding my operation? The lady just said, Kai, if it was the other guy. The man said, huh? <laughs> Remarriage. Church wedding, court wedding, traditional marriage. Everything done. The guy said, No more. The lady said, It was just that like, no more. There was nothing fasted, prayed, head vigil till tomorrow. The marriage is scattered. You know why? Because somebody was too bold to express it verbally. There are many hidden wishes in the lives of people. Either in relationship or in marriage. Yet the lady said, I wish. So your spouse will never tell you they wish you were their ex. The first thing your spouse may not tell you is that they wish you were dead before them. If they sit you and your husband down or sit you and your wife down and they ask each other, who will you wish to die first? Praise the Lord. Hello. Can I talk to you? When women meet with their friends and they're talking about the future, or they meet with their family members and they're talking about the future, you will never hear them say, if I die, 
I go like make my husband do this or no. All you hear them say is that um, the way this man is going, he's not even thinking that one day he's going to die. <laughs> Are you understanding me? He's, he's not even thinking that one day he's going to die. If he dies, what will happen to me and my children? That is what you hear the women say. Then when the men are with their friends or their colleagues or their family members and they're discussing, you hear the men say, if they love their wives too much, man, if my wife dies, I don't think I will marry another woman. No. I don't think I will marry. Is somebody got him? Or some say, if my wife dies, who will take care of these children? I don't know if you get me, please. Every party is discussing the death of the other party. Your spouse will never want to wish they died before you. If they say it in your presence, it's because they are looking for money. Two of them will stay together, then they ask each other, come, who could die before self? But they will say, I'll be ready to die for you. I'll be ready to die for you. Drop knockout. Bam! Hey! The same person who just said he will be ready to die for you. The fourth thing your spouse will never want to tell you is that they wish to dead before them. Not because they have an evil intention, but they love themselves so much that they wouldn't want to die now. Stand to your feet.